Hey YouTube, today I'm going to be going over the Aether 2 update changes, starting out with the Companions. The Companions actually do exactly what the Capes used to do, except in a cooler form. Instead of having the Volky Valkyrie Cape that everyone wants to trade with each other for, relentlessly, you have the Orb of Arkansas. The Orb of Arkansas gives you the same power as the Valkyrie Cape did, the ability to slow fall downwards. The next companion that I'm going to show you is the Baby Pink Sweat. I'm pretty sure that this was made for the ladies, but in my opinion, he is pretty cool and cute to have follow you around. He doesn't give you any special power, and he's just a visual cosmetic. That's all there is to say about this cute little guy. The next companion is really cool. It's called the Ethereal Wisp. This companion will follow you around and turn you invisible. He takes over the invisibility cloak from uh, Aether 2, which was also destroyed due to EULA, which uh, actually I think that was a really dumb idea because the cape itself couldn't even be seen. It was kind of just like an in-game item, not exactly sure why that was removed, but the Ethereal Wisp takes a spot and I think he is a lot The next cooler. companion to have with you is the Fleeting Wisp. He takes over the ability of the Agility Cape where you can actually instantly step up blocks. It's not working correctly right now, but it will be fixed by the time the mutation update comes out for the Aether 2. He's also a really cool companion to have follow you around, whether he's working or not. The next companion to follow you around is called Fangren. He's just another cosmetic like the baby pink sweat, but he is really cool to have following you around. He kinda reminds me of a turtle. The next companion is called Crazy. In my opinion, he actually looks like a dragon with his tail. And, uh, has a little mouth in the front. Which actually has, uh, four different slots on him. Really creepy looking guy, but, uh, then again, from behind, he actually looks pretty cool. He's just another cosmetic and doesn't give you anything. But he is really cool to have following you around. The very last companion is called the Soaring Wisp. He takes the place of the speed cape, which allows you to run at faster speeds. Really cool to have following you around, and gives you a pretty cool perk, which can be very useful against enemies. In the next part of the video, we'll be going over all the new items, and the new entities that will be spawned into the game randomly. As you can see, one of the new items is actually the flaming sword brought back from Aether 1. This really surprised me. I did not expect to see this come back, but whenever I saw it, I was actually very happy because I saw this in a lot of the Aether 1 videos and thought it was a really cool addition. The next thing we'll be going over is the Flying Cow. He was also resurrected from the Aether 1. These guys are just another way of obtaining food really fast in the Aether when you don't feel like cutting down a berry bush or ripping apart an orange tree. Also, the runes on them actually make them look really cool. Next up in the video, we'll be going over the Zephyrs. Now, they weren't nerfed like they were supposed to be, but they were uh, given a new ability. They actually move slower now, and instead of throwing you into the air at extremely fast speeds, they actually cause a really huge updraft that'll throw you into the air. Not as far as it used to, but just enough to give you damage. This I thought was really good because the Zephyrs used to be really overpowered when they would swoop down and hit you even when you're inside of your house. These ones cannot shoot you through walls. They actually have to be able to target you first. Thank you, Dev Team. Next, we'll be going over how the cows can actually help you. Just like in the vanilla Minecraft, you can get milk out of them to cure you whenever you're poisoned by those nasty cockatrices. Mm. Also, they added Skyroot doors, which I thought was really cool because the Aether really did need more crafting recipes like the Minecraft world. And finally, the last thing we'll be going over are the new graphics. Quick soil glass, instead of having an annoying yellow tint to it, now has a really cool blue tint that you can see right through. 
which I think looks amazing. Also, there's Bloody Holy Stone, a new texture for Xanite, Divine Sentry Stone, and Divine Carved Stone. Also, the new Ice Stone texture really surprised me. I thought this really looked cool, and it went perfectly with the glass that it made. The last two things we'll be going over is Quicksoil and the new dungeons. Quicksoil no longer launches you at super fast speeds, capable of giving players the ability to make rocket launchers and catapults that can shoot you from island to island. Now they're just really hard to stay on and very slippery. Last in the video, and most importantly, the dungeons. The dungeons are now made out of new stone called Divine Carved Stone and Divine Sentry Stone, like I showed you earlier in the new textures. Instead of teleporting you straight through the doors of the dungeon, underground in a glitchy island, the dungeons now teleport you to a whole new dimension. In this dimension, all of the dungeons are parallel to each other, which actually frees up more space and it also makes you lag a whole lot less inside of the dungeons now you can actually uh... the sliders will now actually break the blocks that you're standing up against so you can no longer trap them in the corners like we used to do in the 8th and 1 final things in the dungeon that you need to know about is that whenever you conquer a dungeon, it will tell you in the upper left as an indicator. Also the tracking golems. To prevent players from actually lagging out of the dungeons in the party system. Now whenever you focus on them, you don't, you're not actually focused on them. All they do is give you nausea and a really squiggly screen. You can now look away from them which causes a whole lot less lag. You can also violently knife them in the face. The dungeons now have new drops, including pre-enchanted gravitite, usually in groups of six. And also, if I can go back here and find it. They also spawn in companions, so you don't have to pay for donations just to get one. Although donating is really generous. The very last thing that you need to know about the Aether 2 update is that now, the only way out of the dungeon is to actually click on the totem that teleported you into it. So make sure to look. So make sure to put a waypoint on it with your raised minimap or your, uh, your voxel map so that you have a way out. Also, you can re-enter the dungeon at any time except the bosses will not respawn. This means that you can actually make your house inside of the dungeon. You can also set your home here by using commands on servers. The dungeons will also be able to be redone with the party system whenever you uh, conquer it by yourself. Which means after you defeat it by yourself, you can go back in there with a load of friends and get the same things. Except the slider will not drop its items. Hey, that's all for today, but make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and also check out the other channels. You can find the Airmail series by the Gilded Games on uh, their page, so go onto YouTube, look up Gilded Games, and it should be your first result. should have a picture of a gladiator helmet with a white background. Another channel, you can also go to uh, Doom Dog's gaming channel. He posts a lot of cool... Uh, a lot of cool videos, so you should go and check him out. Also, I will post a link in the description for the launcher download, where you can actually play on it right now. The Aether official server will be back up in just a few days, because they're still trying to get it to work after the update. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.